time for the Gore and More podcast. <laughs> gonna have a good time. Gonna have a good time. Yeah, we're gonna have a good time. We're going on now. A ball break, ball break. walking hand in hand in the moonlight. And the we'll be the sweet soul there. I swear we'll never part. We're going on now. A ball break, ball break. running in the sand. Huh. <laughs> and what's up, everybody? And welcome to the Gore and More podcast. This is your host, with the motherfucking most, T.G. Bowser, the Lady Arouser, and this is your Dark Lord of Knowledge, Chad Christman. Oh yeah! And Big Johnny D. What's up, Gorehounds? And the Killing Machine himself, Bobby Amone. What's going on, everybody? Today is November second, twenty twenty, and we got a banger of an episode for you today. But you know what time it is? It's time for your slice of life. Big Johnny D, what'd you do? Well, sir, what did I do? I uh, I got an upgrade. Uh, okay. If anybody's been paying attention to Wake and Bake or anything like that, I think I also mentioned last week, got myself a nice gaming rig now. Uh, and I'm looking at the boys on a nice 27-inch flat or uh, curved monitor. MSI. MSI. Give yourself yes. some credit. M- uh, yeah. Uh, and let me just say, man, it's been fun gaming with the uh, the Project Louder boys. Johnny, Johnny, fix your camera. It's moving. Oh, my God, it is. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, you almost went away, man. That's not cool. Was, right? <laughs> like slowly, you were just like <laughs> my camera was just like, all right, I'm done. Um I gotta watch that shit now. You're FBI. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know so that being said, is why I look at a different angle and shit tonight. And I'm still trying to figure it out. So you gotta bear with me a little bit. I I'll still it'll take a little bit to figure out the perfect where I want this desk and shit. But I got a whole new fucking corner desk and all this other bullshit, dude. So I got, yeah, I got a nice little office, pretty much like Boss Man. Uh, he's definitely got way more shit on there, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't need it all. Um, other than that, man, like I said, dude, just been playing Phasmophobia with the boys. Played a little bit today with uh, TJ and Quarter J of Comics and Kaijus. Uh, our gentleman in the chat here played with our infamous Mr. Brody Kane all weekend. Dude, I fucking played with Brody. Holy shit, man. So I went to the drive-ins Friday. Saw, uh, hold on, Hotel, Hotel Transylvania, Beetlejuice. So that was good for the kids and family. Got to see a personal favorite of all of ours, John Carpenter's The Thing. And it was like midnight and the wife was like, listen, I don't want to go to sleep and have to wake up at two in the morning to leave again. So can we not stay for the fourth one? Which was Mandy. So I was like, fuck it, I'll go home and watch it. Nope. I ended up gaming until 5 in the fucking morning or 5 in the <laughs> afternoon for Brody. Uh, <laughs> so needless to say, I was just like, wow, I got to go to fucking bed dude, because <laughs> my kid's going to be up in two goddamn hours. Uh, but it was a great time. That motherfucker grinds hard as fuck, dude, in comparison to the rest of us. I believe I was told he's up to already a level 33. And as of the other day, he was only like level 16. Jesus Christ. Yeah, dude. He is literally trying to. Bro, he is putting the dick down hard. So what are you doing this game? I've I've never until you guys mentioned, I've never even heard of this game. Bro, it's listen, if TJ didn't fucking say anything to me, I would have never heard of it. And it's a great game, man. Like I can't wait to play with Scoobs because obviously this is just like his wheelhouse, you know what I mean? He does this shit. He's like, fuck video games, man. I do it in real life. Um but no, man, other than that, just been enjoying myself. Watch this movie twice today because it's been so long. And the first time was for Gordon Moore. And the second time was just for the sweet, sweet satisfaction of the movie. Uh, could other be than that, man, perfect movie for I want to hear what you guys have been doing. Chad, what have you been up to, my brother? Work. <laughs> Last week was an <laughs> extremely bad week at work. We were hammered hard. Uh, if it wasn't for the night shift crew, we wouldn't be able to do it. Like they were there till some of them were there till six in the fucking morning. Damn, dude. Getting these orders that's, that's bad. Yeah. Yeah. What time and, uh, did you go in for them? I go in, in at morning? seven. I go in at seven. Uh, the night shift crew comes in. They usually start at four, but they were coming in at 2 30. So and they were until there. six. Uh, one of them would stay until six. She was the, the lead. The others would go home like, I don't know, about 2 30 ish or so. But there so was 12 hours then. Yeah. Yeah, and I was putting in a couple, uh, almost a double. So, yeah, it was a pretty long week. Get that but we made it through. Check, buddy. Yeah. And uh, my boss said if we get uh, our orders done on Friday, after we get the orders done going out this Friday, we can leave whenever we reach our hours. I'm like, I'll have my fucking hours on Thursday. <laughs> there, there you go. Yeah, that means you get a three-day weekend, right? 
Yeah, <laughs> maybe. But holy shit, dude. How, did anybody else get hammered with snow like we did last nope. night? Mm-hmm. Not as bad as you, bro. <laughs> Five inches of snow. Mm. That's I one got Sarah got. I got leaves. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> Love it. Yeah, we, no, dude, going, boys. we got <laughs> like I got maybe two inches with a, like an ice coating underneath. <laughs> so you definitely got way worse. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Uh, so other than that, after, after that, you know, just hung out with the kids, did trick or treating on Saturday, sat and watched Hocus Pocus with the kids Friday night. That nice. is the first time I've That's watched a great that movie. movie. No, what? it is not. You, why? Tell I me. Not, I, I just didn't get into it. I don't. I just didn't really like it. All right, it's, it's overrated. It's it is. Overrated. It is very overrated. That's fair. I just, uh, I feel like I enjoyed watching it for the first time again last year in like 25 years because I just, obviously when I was a kid, I didn't catch all the hell adult jokes there. So I will say I appreciated it that time around. There was a couple of decent adult jokes. I I can't believe I'm saying this, but Sarah Jessica Parker actually was pretty hot in that. Yes, this is one of the movies where she's the I'm not the only one who has this thought. Well, I have that thought every time I watch. I'm like, you and Matthew Broderick, I mean... You know, he obviously watched that, and that was just was what was stuck in his head for her image. And he's like, "Yes, I yeah, am give me some of that, boy." Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she's like, "Well, fuck it, I'm fucking Ferris Bueller." <laughs> oh, oh. Um. <laughs> yes. No. Okay. The only part I will say the the hardest part that makes me laugh in that is the bus driver. <laughs> yeah, like, we, was it? She said, "We desire children." He's like, "Well, it might take me a couple of tries, but I don't think that'll Stephanie be a problem." Stephanie said, "Couch for you." And Jeggy, uh, that's because they live. And the boys have their glasses on, and this is how they see me. Mm. For those of you who do have their glasses on, this is how you see me. This is verification that I am not one of them. That's right. So far. (laughs) That was the wife telling me I'm sleeping on the couch because I didn't like Hocus Pocus. I think that's what I just saw. I'm pretty sure that's exactly the reason why. You you just laid laid lines down, I thought Sarah Jessica Parker looked pretty good, but... Believe me, she does not look good now. No, just in that movie. No, but the girl yeah, who it's was... just that movie. Like any other thing you see her and she's like hideous. So it must have been makeup. Oh, definitely. Right? Everything else you just think about South Park. Uh, really actually, uh, yeah. Catherine, uh, I, I'd actually, uh, I'd bang Catherine New Jimmy if she talked to me in the Peggy Hill voice the whole time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'm happy we have that on camera now. That's good. That's good. <laughs> she's the baddest bitch on tv prove yes. me wrong so who's next me you got- uh let's go to bobby yes uh, it was a nice weekend i had a nice horror movie marathon saturday with my friends my girlfriend and uh, one of her friends who came over so, uh, friday night was a halloween party we dressed up as the strangers nice not too, not too bad for the first time doing it but it needs to be worked on for a cosplay later in the future So, but other than that, it was a pretty chill weekend, but uh, um, I do know what I am going to do now for next year's Halloween. I'm going to do another Michael, but I'm going to get one of those official Halloween six masks and then I'm going to get the suit and everything. Actually, very soon, maybe right after Christmas, I'm just going to get everything and be done already. Why not for Christmas? I got a few things I got to take care of. Ah, that's fine. First, (laughs) but um, anybody listening out there. Oh, maybe. <laughs> but um, other than that, it was a pretty chill weekend. Had a nice Halloween. I didn't give out much candy, but ate a shit ton of it. And I got to tell you, no regrets. Not a single oh, dude. <laughs> dude, I got to say, I we got, took the kids. I'll tell you right now, I got a cute diabetes, and I'm okay with it. Cool. <laughs> we, we took the kids trick-or-treating Saturday, and I swear to God, this was the best year for trick-or-treating for them. They got their bags filled. You know why? And I, 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 I agree, because I feel like my daughter got, like, a ridiculous amount. You think they gave out more so they could be done it quicker? Okay. No, no, I think no. they gave out more because everybody's just so sick of the COVID shit that they just said, fuck this. Mm-hmm. So they just, I mean, I, I don't know about you, dude, but I saw some of the coolest like fucking candy slides and shit, dude. People had LEDs all yeah. over them and everything. Then. We didn't see too many, not too many of those around here. People were just, you know, handing it out. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. just stayed in my little area. In your uh, development. Dude, 
I bet they were handing out like boxes of like full size candy bars there, bro. <laughs> this, this is what's funny. This is what's funny. I noticed this. All the houses we went to, the really nice houses gave out these little rinky dink pieces of shit candy. And the ones that weren't as nice as the others that weren't as a decorator, I think, were giving out the fucking full size bars. Really? <laughs> yes. I could see that. My well, wife noticed that too. My only pet peeve is, is this is like, okay, so obviously I was out trick or treating. I wasn't going to be at my house. Now, now I don't live in the city. But I do have decorations everywhere. So I figured, you know, there might be some kids that stop by. There are some kids along, along the road. So you mm-hmm. always put a bowl of candy out. You know what I mean? Especially if you got decorations. Dude, but the people that have their house decorated, come on. Don't go through all the trouble and then not put out some candy and shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Your house is all lit up. Dude, I don't know how many houses we went to that we were like, oh, sweet. Let's go to this one. Nothing. I agree with that. And it was really but, nice this year with it being on a Saturday. My yeah. in-laws came down. And so, like, literally the whole family went trick-or-treating. Nice, dude. Very nice. Yeah, so we had a really nice night. So, Bobby, what else did you do this weekend, bud? Besides your uh, Halloweenathon, that was basically it. Really, that's it. Was a very chill weekend, <laughs> and then Sunday was chilling because it was fucking raining all day. So that was it. It was chilling watching Halloween movies and horror movies all day, which is pretty much. How many it. did you get out? Did you lose count? Uh, well, I pretty much got all the Halloween movies. Nice. And what was it? Wait, like all of them? All of them? Yeah, pretty much. Damn, dude. Oh, I don't fuck around. No. <laughs> turn on AMC, let them roll. The ones they don't show, just have ready in a DVD player. Like, you got to have that shit ready to rock. Okay. Fair enough. <clears throat> and then there was four other ones we watched, but the one that we ended the night on, not really a Halloween movie, but it never gets old. The Burbs. Oh, dude, that's a classic though. Like, uh, my girlfriend loves that movie, and I do too. But like, I could watch it five times in a row. It's just as hilarious as the first time I watched it. I mean, you knew, you do know you got that sweet horror slot for. Oh, uh, I'd also like to say that uh, uh-huh. Carrie Fisher might have been at her peak in that movie, hotness wise, uh, milf hotness wise. Okay. Hmm. Actually, I have to rewatch it to. Uh, yeah, I got to rewatch it. Too. It's been a really long Bobby? time. Bobby, uh, actually, yeah, he is right. He really <laughs> she is, is. She is perfect. It's like right before she gained the weight and she's like peak like levels like Dan Aykroyd Beyonce type time, I think. So okay. she's like, she's fit. She's oh. Yeah, Woo! Nice. <laughs> Carrie Fisher, you were a smoke show. So there you uh, go. <laughs> yeah, she was. After the princess let run down for years. So I got to say this now, as I say every other week. I did podcasts here, there, and podcasts everywhere. Me and Fat Jesus this weekend. I uh, <laughs> <laughs> love that post. That was great. We did that a was, that was beautiful Halloween top ten episode where we listed our top ten hollow uh, well favorite horror movies and then our three honorable mentions. Then we had six shows from the Project Louder Network call in and give their top tens and honorable mentions. It was super cool. Thursday I did trick or treat with Taryn. No Wednesday. Wednesday. I did trick or treat with Taryn, and that was great. I got to do part six, Jason, and Halloween five, my, uh, Michael. Didn't take any pictures. Didn't see a point. Was there to uh, entertain Taryn? She was. Yeah, I, was saying, I didn't take any of my shit, dude. It was just kids and. Taryn was Kelly from Ash vs. Evil Dead. Taryn's nice. favorite character. Yes. Uh, that's. Uh, yeah. Question for you, dude. Mm-hmm. You said you did that on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Is it? Does your place like? Your community, like they're just like, yo, we're already doing the Halloween then. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Yeah, we got an email in the uh like community email thing, and then it was like, Hey, uh, it's gonna be Wednesday between this time and this time. And I was like, Fuck yeah, it doesn't interfere with wrestling. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so did anybody do anything? So I don't mean to like tick did anybody do anything in the area like for Halloween that you knew of? I didn't check. Yeah. Hmm. It just makes me I don't know, that just interests me that they wouldn't they, just do it on Saturday. They, Probably do, but wait. Wait, what? Where you you got to understand? In order for us to go, like, go to other houses, we can't walk. Are you okay, Chad? No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm thinking they probably did it Wednesday because wasn't. Uh, well, you got to understand. Wasn't our, Saturday the Trump rally? Yes, Saturday was the yeah. Trump rally, and you got to understand Wednesday. Uh, like where we're located, we're not near any other places. Like our development is like we can't walk to like into town. Like we have to go down a private driveway. And walk right, right, right. real far in order to get into town. So, like, there's no like walking out of our little area than walking into other places. Right. So it's kind of like just in our little, like I said, it's our little area thing. So nice, dude. Yeah. 
Hell I think yeah. uh, our little area, like thing, like development. Uh, Sarah said it's like a quarter mile big, like to drive it around. Because if really? no half mile, sorry, it's a half mile. Because if you walk around it twice, it's a mile. Nice. That's a really good. That's a really good size yeah. area. Then yeah, it is. It's not like it's not like a small area. So sorry, I didn't mean to like interrupt. It's you. all good. I just, I, that just it's a good question. I totally understand. Well, like, why would they celebrate it separate? Yeah. yeah. And then Thursday, well, Saturday, like Chad said, we had an insane Trump rally, like fucking crazy. It was the, there's a picture of it circulating Twitter and it is, mm-hmm. it looks like a Metallica concert. It is just, <laughs> the turnout is oh, insane. Yeah. It, was, it was insane. It's insane. So without further ado, it's time for 1988's John Carpenter's they live and mm. holy shit. So Who, whose pick was this mine? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So, 1988's Welcome. They Live, directed by John Carpenter, written by John Carpenter as John Armitage. Produced by Larry Franco, starring Rowdy Rowdy Piper as John Nada, Keith David as Frank Armitage, Meg Foster as Holly Thompson, Raymond St. Jacques as yeah. St. Preacher, George Buckflower <laughs> as Drifter Collaborator, Peter <laughs> Jason as Gilbert, Cy Richardson as Black Revolutionary, Susan Blanchard as what is that? Ingenue. Ingenue. Norman Alden as construction foreman. Music by John Carpenter and Alan Howorth. Cinematography by Gary Kibb, edited by Gib Jaff and Frankie Jimenez. Jimenez. Yeah. Jimenez. Distributed by Universal Pictures. Released November 4th, 1988. Runtime of 94 midgets. Budget 9 million. Gross 13. Million. Boop, 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 boop. No, no, 3 million. 3 million. Sorry. Budget 3 million. Grow. What did I say? Nine million. Oh, that's a lot. Ninety-four <laughs> he was midgets carrying over from the okay. ninety-four midgets. Ninety-four yeah, midgets, so. three million budget, thirteen million gross. Nice, not bad, not bad. There you go, not bad at all. So uh, I'm gonna pop the handsome Bobby, oh, and man. then Chad, cue the catchphrase. Roll that beautiful bean footage. And there we go. Ah, uh, here we go. The epicness. This is the original. Nice. So this looks like a thirty-five millimeter scan. It is. <laughs> what do these things want and why are they here you still don't get it do you boy they have recruited the rich and the powerful they're running the whole show wake up they're all about you all around you blind on us to the truth take a look they are safe as long as they are not discovered i don't know what they are or where they came from but we gotta no, stop them stay away from me put these on they have us look at them they're everywhere We have no other choice. I don't like this one. Mm -hmm. Leave it alone, man. It ain't none of my business. Ain't none of yours. We have been lulled into a trance. Listen to what I'm saying to you. We're in trouble. The whole world's in trouble. Control us! You're sending some kind of signals on the TV sets. Good catch. Nobody noticed the the rabbit hole logo was still alive. (laughs) Now we start spilling some blood. Let's go! Push button. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick. <laughs> oh, God. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Thank you, Corey. <laughs> uh, talk about the perfect movie. The blasters. Literally the perfect time of year. That's why I scheduled it for this week. It's great. It's perfect. Uh, so who's running this bitch down? Let's let Bobby do it. To Bobby, pick. dude. Sure. Right. Hold on. Let me get it up here. And here we go. <laughs> they influence our decisions without us knowing. They numb our senses without us feeling it. They control our lives without us realizing it. They live. Horror master John Carpenter directs this heart-pounding thriller in which aliens are systematically gaining control of the Earth by masquerading as humans and luring the public into submission. Is it Nada or Nada? I think it's Nada. Nada? Nada, a wanderer without meaning in his life, discovers a pair of sunglasses capable of showing the world the way it truly is. As he walks the streets of Los Angeles, Nada notices that both the media and the government are compromised 
comprised, whatever, of subliminal messages meant to keep the population subdued, and, the, and that most of the social elite are skull-faced aliens bent on world domination. With this shocking discovery, Nada fights to free humanity from the mind-controlling aliens. Yeah, baby. Go for it, boys. You know, I would just want to throw this out there that shortly before his death, uh, Piper was insisting this movie is actually a documentary. And I could. I that. love him. I love I him. Mean, you know, one of the first Jerk the Curtain episodes that Corey and I did, we reviewed Hulk Hogan versus Roddy Piper at the Great American Bash, and uh, Hogan threw Piper into... No, Piper threw Hogan into a charcoal grill. The fucking charcoal <laughs> went everywhere. And it was hilarious. It was just an utter fucking brawl. And this movie is literally that. But that Bro. guy's nuts. Rowdy Piper is so charismatic. He he could make the crowd pop by just looking at them. That oh, fucking pop. stare could pop a fucking crowd. WrestleMania. He is my all-time favorite wrestler. Yeah. I've always loved Piper because he makes it so easy to hate him, and you know he's doing his job extremely well when you do that. Monster heel. The best in the best business, heel, baby. Best heel there ever was. Not only that, as a person, <clears throat> me and my uncle met him, I want to talk about a sweetheart of a guy. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter who you were. Even if there were wrestling fans that said they didn't like him, but they said why, he, he was just like totally – totally with it with everybody like he Absolutely. was well they probably just didn't like his character more mm -hmm. so than the actual guy but oh yeah now real wrestlers will stay in character all the time and i love that that makes me fucking chub up immediately when i know a character's like that. you meet them in their in their mean to you but it's because they're in character that's the best see that's the fucking best that's the how i met the miz is like that yes he's, he's an so expert at that i met gold dust like that and then it was oh, cool shit. because later at the hotel at the con we were all just chilling at the bar, and then it was just like, you know, dude in that, jeans and shirt. MJF from AEW is like that. He'll get a picture with you and be like, get the fuck off me, you fat Mark. He'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's great. Love that No, stuff. dude, this so, movie, yeah. though? Oh, my God. First of all, great. yeah. My first time watching. I will say that my no very shit. first time ever really? watching this film. Yes. I figured all of you guys would have been like. Pretty good with this. Yeah, no, I've oh, I, I loved times. this movie. I'm very happy it was on the is on the schedule. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, so and I, I'm not going to question it, but I have seen online that some people question if it is per se a horror movie. No, it's absolutely horror. The moment yeah. he puts the glasses on, it's it's not horror in the net in the normal sense. It's horror in the sense that we are being that the humans are being right it's it's more the else. overall yes. like waking up horror of it like oh shit like this feels a little too real like it's almost it's almost like borderline hp lovecraft material correct see i and like I, oh go, go, ahead, ahead. go ahead no dude go ahead see, man you take see for me as much as obviously it's carpenter he's known as the master of horror for me this is and i'm not disagreeing with you but for me personally, this is not a horror movie. This is a Carpenter does two good things. Really good. Badass action films, including an extremely strong male actor or a horror film with an extremely strong female lead. Those are this one of the true. things that he does extremely well. And all of his movies are those two concepts. And if you and if you want to take this, this takes uh, Halloween three concept and amps it up to a planetary scale. To yeah, me, this, I guess you could this was a yeah. movie more of psychological thriller yes to, to me not so much horror horrifying in a way but more like well a, a it's not mdb thriller. classifies it as sci-fi horror and i think that that's probably as accurate as it gets this is sci-fi yeah. before yeah. it is horror yeah. i mean yeah you're not going to consider it like in the alien ask of you know ask of it but at the same time yes it's still dude if you really sat back and thought about it for two seconds like that's a fucking terrifying thought like and I mean, obviously, everybody already, you know, there's people out there that think this shit happens anyways, like with the Well, no, 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 that no, that no, that the reptilians exist. Hillary Clinton is a confirmed reptilian. We we have discussed this on this podcast at least six times. What is it is now? It is Goran Moore canon that Hillary what? Clinton is a reptile person. But what we species know of reptile? Because I don't know. Ask that. Ask Jeffrey Epstein. He's the only person that knows. No, you know what? Oh, well, <laughs> you know what? we're fucked, aren't we? <laughs> I think 
We got to ask Steve, man. He might know this shit. This could be his wheelhouse. This movie is a conspiracy theorist's dream. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, yeah. it's, it's all based on Reaganism at the time. I mean, it is, yeah. Could you imagine if it was that easy to just take a fucking pair of glasses, throw them on, and actually see the evil in the world? Like, You know what's funny is uh, right, after, right before the show, I was talking to Kaufman. And he's like, man, that movie's crazy. He's like, what if things were actually like that? And I was like, you're part of the problem. And he's like, what? And I was like, you make the labels for shit. I was like, you design all the labels for oh. things. I was like, you literally are you literally are the consume and obey part of this film. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this is true. He actually is. And right now, me and John are the only ones that will survive because we got. Well, you remember, you, you got to take them off after a while because it's like a fucking drug. Oh, oh. Knife to the dome. <laughs> I'll take it. Dude, this movie had so many great lines in it, by the way. <laughs> and like, I mean, I feel we know everybody's favorite and the mainstream one. As was Jackie, already you're right. You're right. You're spitting hot fire, darling. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so for our audio listeners right on the screen here. So for our <laughs> listeners, I'll read this one out. So read it. Well, think about Illuminati and Pyramid screen, Sleep. Look at our history. The funny thing about this movie is it's still relevant relevant today. Like it could be made right now. I am jumping the gun here. <laughs> nope. Very I accurate. feel I, Very we accurate. all kind of feel the same way. And I felt like this when I saw this the first time, like 10, mm -hmm. 15 years ago. Like it's just been a common theme and it's it is unrelenting. Like I feel we have all definitely have like feel the beat down at some point of consumerism. To where everybody's just like, fuck everything else. I'm just going to take it a break. I feel like it comes better with age as well. Uh, Actually, speaking of consumerism, if you're going to buy anything and if you're going to be a filthy consumer, may I have a couple places that I recommend? Yes. By all means. Michelle. <laughs> Beautiful segue, by the way. I know. Mwah. I'm so good at these. I'm just blowing air kisses. I'm the hey, hypnotize the mess. Hey, listener. Yes, you. The sad sack sitting there listening to this awesome <laughs> podcast. You know why you look like shit? Well, it's because you aren't wearing Project Louder merch. It's a proven fact that wearing Project Louder merch increases your likelihood of not looking like shit by at least 35%. Oh. And let's be honest, you should take it where you can get it these days. So head on over to projectlouder.net and click on the merch tab. Pick up some hot fucking swag and start looking like the winner you truly are. Where is it? Are we getting the other one? Hello there, creepy girls. Do you like spooky things in horror movies? Then Cabin 13 has the stuff for you. Check out their selection of horror-themed props, bins, busts, action figures, collectibles, and more. You can find them on Facebook and Instagram. Be sure to visit Cabin13.com and buy something, or I'll kill you! Marcio Charlie's Horror Costume Studios. Premium hand-sculpted latex masks, butts, and hoods. Everything is handmade and painted by Marcio himself. Be sure to check out his wide range and selection of products over at Facebook and Instagram at Horror Costume Studios. Oh, hello. Do you know about Project Louder? Well, let me tell you. Project Louder is home to 16 of the finest podcasts a nerd could possibly procure. They have a show for everyone. Whether you're into horror films, modeling comics, 90s kid shows, or that weird tentacle filled subgenre you search for at three in the morning. <laughs> so head on over to projectlouder.net and treat yourself to something truly exquisite. Thank you for that. Graveyard Classics. Oh, that Poor DTs and posters, professional in house screen printing, and clay prints. Powered by Death Style Art and Graphics. Go see what you can dig up over at graveyardclassics.net. Come on down to Mask by Lance. Premium Friday the 13th custom made hockey mask. Down there in Tennessee by Lance McKinney. Find him on Facebook and Instagram over at Mask by Lance. Go order one now, boy. yee Oh, man. <laughs> and there's your ad block as recommended by Dale Silva from Cal. I need, I need Lance's ad now to calm me down. <laughs> 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 Oh, dude! Yeah, the first was time... it worth waiting? Oh it my was. God! Yes. Dude, Although, I, I do gotta say, I miss, I miss the sexual Tyrannosaurus. Uh, yes, I do miss that. <laughs> like, I need that, <laughs> dude. The first time he sent me those, and the the classical music one, dude, I almost pissed my pants. Like, <laughs> uh, I was already laughing before it even got to the big like the 
the tentacle. Oh, the fucking tentacle shit, dude. <laughs> like, as soon as I started, like, because he's like, yo, these are the commercials. And it just, I don't know if you guys could hear that. Like, it was a little quiet for me, but I also have my volume down just so it doesn't relay. But, dude, the classical music, as soon as I heard that, even before TJ's voice, I was already geeking out, dude, just because I was like, oh, God, where the fuck are we going? <laughs> so, bravo, sir, bravo. Well you. done. Well done. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm t- I, I got to take these off for a little bit. Johnny, you can take the glasses right now. Yeah. That's getting the headaches. <laughs> it's getting headaches, man. Yes. <laughs> Bobby's got that sweet drug. So, before I wrap up this cord here, uh, do you want me to give a, a call to our DKB? Absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. I know he watched it and took notes, so I feel like we mm-hmm. have to. Well, because he tagged us in it on yeah, uh, did. Facebook, I think, for yeah, yesterday. Live, so. uh, it's amazing he's awake. Dude, that motherfucker is a millionaire in that game we're playing, dude. I'll tell you <laughs> what. We don't have to buy anything, bro. He's just like, I got it. How they do this? My doppelganger, king of banger from down under. What's up, brother? My mom's right. Just thought I'd take time off Phasmophobia to listen in on the fucking show. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> Damn, it, that, that game's a fucking drug, I tell you. <laughs> yeah. And, not, and I'm the victim. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, b- before we send you off to rehab, I got to know, what are your thoughts on They Live? I I think it's an excellent film. I I just want to start off by saying that this is probably one of the coolest to most underrated films of the eighties. Um, you know, uh, I I love the character chemistry between Keith David and R- Roddy Piper. I, I I think it has some clever and extremely fun dialogue. Um, but what really makes it is, is the the out of, out of the blue batshit crazy fight scene. I, I, it's a weird, wacky bromance that works in so many levels. Um, I, I also feel that it, like the the feel of the film, the cinematography, you know, like it was filmed by, it, well, it feels like it was filmed by the man himself, Cundy. Um, but I think uh, Gary is a Gary Kid. Yes. Yeah, he he did an amazing job to make this film feel exactly like a Carpenter film. Um, but yeah, overall, the film's premise is amazing. It's relevant to today, uh, with so much shit that's happening in the world. So I, I think it's yeah, it's basically what I would say a documentary on so many it's levels. The same cinematography as or as Escape from L.A. Ah, oh yeah, right. Well, yeah, you know they've got that shit. In that, man. Also in Big Trouble and Little Vagina. Yes. <laughs> I was gonna say it seems it seems like that. Also, additional <laughs> camera operator on Halloween too, so he worked alongside Cundy. Oh, so that's why you picked ah. up some of those flavors there. I can see. Ah. Yeah, because I was watching it, I was feeling yeah, Cundy again, but yeah, no, I I can see I can see what he's done there, and I think he's executed very well. Absolutely. So, what's your uh, Gorn Moore <laughs> score there, Brody Kane? Oh, uh, well, I was gonna give it a four, but I'm gonna give it a four point five. Fucking A. That's right. solid. Very nice. Yeah, I haven't I, seen I, I, I re- solid since the last time John took his pants off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and hopefully we get to see it today. Hopefully. <laughs> Is that something you'd like to see on the Patreon, Brody? Only fans. Yes, Only fans. five bucks. Only fans. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, Brody, until next week, my doppelganger kang a banger. <laughs> Peace out, my Peace home out. skillets. <laughs> hey, Brody. Peace and love. I, I don't know why, but something about the way he said home skill it just sounds ten times fun. You're coming from the yes, Australian. It does. It really and delicious. <laughs> so boy. <And> delicious. <laughs> let's hear what we already gave our thoughts kind of. So uh let's move on to the next portion of our show. Chadwick, our that dark lord be... of knowledge. Read yes, away. Yes, I, I have got some good stuff here. Oh That's, shit, hold on. There's Wrong plenty page. of good shit behind me. Go. Here we go. Okay, so obviously we're going to talk about the world, the famous line first. It says the line, I've come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass and I'm all out of bubblegum, was ad-libbed by Roddy Piper. According to director John Carpenter, Piper had previously written the line in his notebook of potential <laughs> verbal bits during his wrestling career. I believe it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that was very Piper-esque. Yeah, he shared a notebook with Carpenter and they agreed that this particular line fit the character in the film perfectly. Then Piper went on to use it at a wrestling match. Ah, talk about perfect. 
Mm -hmm. The big fight sequence was designed, rehearsed, and choreographed in the backyard of John Director of Director John Carpenter's production office. The fight between Nada and Frank was only supposed to last 20 seconds, but Piper and David decided to fight it out for real, only faking the hits to the face and groin. They rehearsed the fight for three weeks. Carpenter was so impressed he kept the scene intact, which runs five minutes and 20 seconds. Thank you for that. That fight is just probably one of the best movie fights Dude, it's one of the best wrestling fights. Come on. It's just yeah. one of the, yeah, it's one of the best fights ever on film. I mean, uh, Roddy Piper, being a married man at the time of filming, refused to take his wedding band off. That's why in several scenes you can see a wedding ring on. I was actually going to put that in my notes, but then I found it on here first. Well, that all right. I'm going to cross that one off. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's because you know what? I was kind of wondering that. I was like, they never mentioned a backstory or anything. You know what I mean? Of like a dead wife or whatever. So, yep. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Piper's character never gives his name, nor is he referred to by name throughout the entire movie. He is simply listed as Nada in the credits, which means nothing in Spanish and Portuguese. The name almost certainly references the character George Nada and Ray Faraday Nelson's short story, Eight O'Clock in the Morning, from which the film is adapted. Yeah. Which has like almost nothing to do with it. It's almost night and day, the differences between the and two. And now that I think about it, now that you said that, Chad... If you think about it, the Nada being his name actually fits it just to call him Nada mm -hmm. more than giving him a name. Because if you think about it, the movie is that movie of he means nothing, yet he's the one who's going to show you everything. One of the alien TV broadcasts refers to the director by name. An alien commentator is complaining about sex and violence yes. in the media. And his dialogue breaks off with the words, <clears throat> filmmakers like George Romero and John Carpenter have to show some restraint. And I love that because that shit's actually happened. So I'm glad he put that in there to just like kind of yeah put the dick down on that shit. Yeah, pretty much showing <laughs> what he thought of those damn uh, reviewers. Dude, I'm surprised they, was it, was it Eber that went after Carpenter? <laughs> yes. I'm surprised it almost didn't look like a fat skeleton thing like Eber or something. You know what I mean? Like, oh God. <laughs> Uh, Carpenter brought real homeless people into the production for several scenes and smaller characters and gave them food as well as paychecks. Nice. Look at that. See that? He's a nice so guy. I wonder if that, so I wonder if that air scene where they're, uh, where Nada's getting food. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that was actually like a craft table for the homeless that were actually like came in for the scene. Maybe it was. It's a good possibility. Kettle chips do rock. Who put yes, that up they there? Do. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> I'm not really a fan. I'm, I'm, I I really don't eat my, very many potato chips to begin with. So shit. Oh, shit. Where was I? Uh, John Carpenter wanted a truly rugged individual to play Nada. He cast wrestler Roddy Piper in the lead after watching him at WrestleMania three. Carpenter remembered Keith David's performance in The Thing and wrote the role of Frank specifically for the actor. Nice. Love that. According to a title card in the made for DVD short documentary, he lives interview with John Carpenter. They live opened at the number one at the box office and disappeared from theaters soon afterwards. It actually, uh, did you notice the release date was, uh, also right before the election day? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. So is that, is that probably why it w went away so quick? Maybe I think so. For years after the film's release, and even on the movie's DVD commentary, Piper maintained that the film was based on an actual incident in the 50s in which a company manufactured a TV that planted subliminal messages in women's brains, instructing them to make extravagant purchases. Piper was unaware that the documentary he had seen was, in fact, a comedy short from 1978. Hmm. <laughs> so That's he was awesome. duped into thinking that was real. Corona. <laughs> No, my cough is from wearing these goddamn masks all the time at work, and I got freaking congestion my, 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 like crazy. Corona. <clears throat> also, my throat's really dry because I need a drink. Yeah. Originally scheduled for an October 21st, 1988 release date, the film was moved to November 4th in order to avoid competition with Halloween 4. <clears throat> Interestingly, Carpenter had been producer and co-writer of the first three Halloween films, but Halloween 4 was the first in the series that was made entirely without his involvement. Another reason to move the release was to capitalize on the November 8th presidential election in tandem with the film's social commentary. Okay. Mm. Now, this 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 did not surprise me, this next bit. Uh, the role of Nada was originally written for Kurt Russell. Yeah. But John Carpenter felt he should cast somebody else after casting Russell in four of his films prior to this one. Elvis, Escape from New York, The Thing, and Big Trouble in Little China. That's Because I'm sitting here watching this, and I'm just listening to the lines. I'm like, this feels like it was written for R Kurt Russell. And also sitting here watching this, maybe it was the music or the production vibes, but I thought it felt a lot like Escape from New York to me, production-wise. 
Yeah, I could see that. The next bit, John, I know you noticed this. The communicators used from the used by the guards near the end of the me is also when is it, Johnny? Did you write it down? Did we lose John? Okay, so the communicators were the PKE meters from Ghostbusters. Ah, I did notice that. The one guy had them. Yes, yes, yes. The aliens superficially resemble walking, rotting corpses. John Carpenter didn't want the aliens to look like the high-tech creatures of other science fiction films. He decided that since these beings were corrupting humanity, they themselves should resemble corruptions of human beings. Uh The film was made and released about 25 years after its source short story, 8 o'clock in the morning, and had first been published in 1963. According to Carpenter, this movie was also based on an Eclipse Comics comic book adaptation of the story. Nice. <clears throat> be fun to find that one. On an episode of Monster Vision in, in 1997, Piper mentioned that John Carpenter wanted him to discuss the film's political subte- subtext, which was critical of Reaganomics while doing promotions for the film. However, due to being in the United States on a green card, Piper felt it wasn't his place to discuss American politics. <clears throat> he also noted that he had rather liked President Reagan and thus didn't really agree with the film's politics, so he would shy away from talking about them while promoting the film. Aha. Uh-huh. Writer-director John Carpenter has said of the movie it was a critique of Reaganomics, a vehicle to take on Reaganism. However, over the years, several neo-Nazi and white supremacist groups co-opted the movie for their own purpose, spreading rumors <laughs> that it was really an allegory for Jews controlling the world. Oh my God. This forced Carpenter to respond on Twitter in 2017 by stating, They live is about yuppies and unrestrained capitalism. It has nothing to do with the Jewish control of the world, which is slander and a lie. <laughs> Jesus, I, I can see after. why I can see why white supremacists would think that. Even mm. thirty years after the movie, you still have to fight for it. What does <laughs> that tell you, though? That means that it's got an impact somewhere. Mm-hmm. Not always in the right way, though. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, the scene where the police attack and destroy the homeless encampment was difficult to Piper to shoot, as it reminded him of similar events he witnessed in his own life. Uh, on the commentary, John Carpenter pointed out that Piper has made more movies than he has. I've only made 20, says the director. Yeah, but you made 20 good ones, replies Piper. Ooh. <laughs> Oof. At the beginning of the movie, well, no, Piper was telling John Carpenter he made 20 good ones versus no, that's true. 20 bad ones that Piper made. Oh, by the way, um, looking through different movies, and I found Hell Comes to Frogtown on, uh, is it Tubi? Yes. I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've seen it on there as well. At the beginning of the movie, when Nod is walking the streets and pauses by a storefront filled with TVs, one TV image shown is of Mount Rushmore. The shadows on the president's eyes are particularly dark, and Abraham Lincoln appears to be wearing a pair of the sunglasses. This foreshadows Nod a taking on the role of the great emancipator. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't notice that, but now I kind of want to recheck that out. Life's a bitch, and she's back in heat was Macho Man's favorite line from the film. <laughs> That is, that's actually probably my, I love the bubblegum one, but that's probably my favorite. That's what I'm saying, dude. This l- movie gave so many good lines, dude. Ain't love grand. <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey! No, see, you got to get the kettle cooked jalapeno. Them things are. Oh, those are upstairs, buddy. I got one of every flavor. Oh, you holding out on me? <laughs> out is on it me? just me or does John look like a commercial for those chips? <laughs> what are you talking about? Like Wayne's World 2? Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Delicious. Delicious. <laughs> no, I love mm. it. Yes, so- it is the choice of a new generation. <laughs> it's really sad, man. It's like people just sell out, you know? Like- yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's it's truly sad. It's 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 a fucking it's just not okay. Fucking chips. Did you did you guys collaborate on this? That's great. Yeah, we did. We did. And shame on Bobby because I told his ass too, but he didn't do it. <laughs> I'm not a fan. No time to get to the store. <laughs> Thank oh, you, I, Heather. That was good, guys. That was good. But you know something though? Every week now, one of us has to have a bag of the kettle chips. I will do next Monday. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that was good you guys Sorry, i'm it. just taking in the comments right now <laughs> yeah <I apologize. laughs> uh this <clears throat> excuse me this film an alien nation were two major hollywood studio science fiction films released in the year of 88 that feature alien characters assimilated into modern day society on the planet earth the fight scene between keith david and roddy piper was used as a direct reference for the scene in south park cripple fight 
where the handicapped children, Jim yes! and Timmy, sit on a different couch. <laughs> <laughs> that does also literally go on for five fucking minutes. Yep, it's a short right. for shot remake. That is awesome. <laughs> Oh my god! I feel terrible. This was the this was the seventh and final collaboration between John Carpenter and composer Alan Howarth. Nice. Okay, now listen to this: Alec Baldwin, Michael Bean, Brian Bosworth, Jeff Bridges, Bruce Campbell, Tom Cruise, Harrison Ford, Mel Gibson, Tommy Lee Jones, Michael Keaton, Christopher Lambert, Stephen Lang, Dolph Lundgren, Michael Madsen, Bill Paxton, Ron Perlman, Schwarzenegger, Stallone. Patrick Swayze, Van Dam, and Bruce Willis were all considered to play the role of Nada originally. Holy shit. Jesus fuck, dude. That somebody couldn't choose. They went through that whole list before they said, you know what? Fuck it, let's get Piper. But you know, even though I mean, as much as I like pretty much half those names, if you put Schwarzenegger in this movie, I'm sorry. I love him. It would not have had the effect that it did. Well I don't think. I would I don't know, man, but you'd have Carpenter behind him. True. We've never had Carpenter behind Schwarzenegger, so you don't know. That would be. I don't know. DJ's looking like no, so maybe not. Looking over this list of names, the only one I could really see actually working would actually be Dolph Lundgren. That would have been sweet. This would have been very much in his wheelhouse. Actually, yeah. Because now you listed a lot of names there, though. Mm -hmm. Bruce Willis. I mean, the reason why I don't think like even a, a name like Schwarzenegger would work because at the time, think about it, every action movie he made literally had 10 guns in his hand. This was one movie where he didn't have that. At the time, I don't think it would have worked. And you know what? If we didn't get Piper, we wouldn't have got that sweet five minutes fuck, fucking fight scene. You know what I mean? Uh, or the backdrop what? to the concrete. Or the bubblegum yeah. line. Yeah. Dude, like... He just, Listen, I loved Key. It, like you said, dude, you said a lot of phenomenal people on there. But yeah, but it just even even if you replaced Keith David, he was that one. He was that guy that really fuck you. You'd never replace Keith David. <laughs> yeah, no, never. No, don't. Like that's what I'm saying. Like who else could play that the way he did? Mm. Well, nobody, because it was written for him. So well, there you go. Well, no, you're talking about Nada, dude. Like well, oh, both, for Nada. Both. I thought he was talking about Nada. Keith David. Nada, Nada, Nada. Continue. Damn. Uh, John Carpenter has an uncredited role as the voice that says sleep. Oh, oh. yeah. Okay. I, that one I did know. Uh, they Live is extensively referenced in the 2013 video game Saints Row 4. Keith David plays himself in a supporting role throughout the game as the vice president. And a They Live themed level towards the end of the game unlocks Rowdy, Roddy Piper as a combat ally. Yep, oh, and it's fucking awesome. <laughs> I actually haven't made it that far in the game. Except for that motherfucker Keith David will not romance you. No, he God won't. Damn it. <laughs> He's the only one that holds out, dude. The Everybody else you can't screw in that D, game. But not Keith David, dude. Keith David's like, nah, we're good. <laughs> and he just <laughs> gives you that nice, soulful voice, and you're just like, he, all right. He is dude. fucking smooth in that game, too. Dude, he's smooth in everything he does, man. He's just got such a good voice. Like, you guys have mentioned your favorite lines, and I, not that this is a segment in it, but, like, dude, my favorite line is just the way he delivered when Roddy went for the fucking nut punch, and he just goes, you dirty motherfucker. Yeah, dude, <laughs> that shit made me laugh so fucking hard, dude. <laughs> like, it it is me too. he says it, too. Yeah, like, the he's delivery was dirty perfect. Dirty motherfucker. Oh, sorry, Chad. Keep continuing. That, that continue. was the last of it. That was the last. Oh, bit. okay. All right. Good. All right. I saved the best for last. I had to mention Saints Row Four. <laughs> oh, Gary Saints Kibb Row. died this year on March 9th. Oh man, he was seventy nine. Oh, oh shit. Damn. So, we already took care of a couple big questions. <laughs> uh Chad actually mentioned. I was going to say, uh, what did we see? What device did we see in this movie that we've seen in other movies? And that was the. DKE meter, oh, which yeah. is for some reason a fucking walkie talkie in this movie, but whatever. I guess we'll take it. Uh, so here's one. How many wrestling moves did you guys see in this movie? I saw a clothesline. I saw a suplex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we get anything else? Backdrop onto the concrete. Mm -hmm. so that's three. Oh, uh, we got. I figured this would have been. Uh, mostly... We Go got ahead. the hit. We got the. We got the gut wrench suplex. Yep. Whenever he's upside down and he grabs yep. him by the stomach and pulls him. Yeah, yeah that's kind of, I, that's why I said suplex, but I didn't know if it was a... There's a specific name for it. Right. I know there's a lot. That's why I've, 
I figured this question. Okay. Would be now the reason about. that there wasn't is because Roddy Piper is not known for his wrestling ability as much as his brawling ability. He was not gotcha. a technical wrestler. He was a throw fists and stare at the crowd guy. Like Chad said, monster heel. Didn't need to do it. it you're just doing things to piss off the crowd at that point. So nice. Yeah. Uh, but the met, met, like the wrestling moves we did see all fit perfectly fine within the context of that fight, and they yeah. didn't seem forced. No, and they were impactful. And I would also have to say that because they picked Piper for this role, that those fight sequences seemed that much more real. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what worked out for the best because it's like, yo, you already have a trained professional. So I will say that you're, uh, the whole Schwarzenegger thing would be ass because I don't think he could throw a punch nearly yeah. as well as Piper. Well, I'd also agree because Piper was the one that they insisted on continually doing the fight scene. That, I don't know if I anybody else yeah. did not sure. hold a gun the right way the entire movie. And I think Schwarzenegger would because he's held so many guns. Right. <laughs> well, that's it. But other than I don't that, know, man. 80s, yeah. like, listen, there's some questionable times Arnold was holding guns in the 80s movies. Like, there's well, a few times they were good. Listen, all the time he one arms those guns, just so you know. Oh, they're bro. Held to, they're held to his bicep with fishing wire so you can't fucking see it. <laughs> the, the best part I always think That's about is the commando when he runs into the yard, dude. Literally one arms this fucking like M16. Yeah, one arms that bitch, dude. As like ten guys are shooting at him, all miss him, and he's just like Hurr! all takes him down in yeah, one no. fucking. Sway. Every time he's one arming a gun, especially in Terminator, they had to wrap it around here so that way he could actually hold it. It's it makes cool. sense, dude. Balance that shit. Nice. But continue. Continue. So let's see. We got the wrestling questions. What else do we got? I think that was about it because the ring one was my bigger one, but Chad hit that. Uh, unless you guys got any questions. No, it's a pretty uh, straightforward film. It pretty much explains everything. Yeah, that, yeah that's I why I didn't, say, I didn't really take any notes because, you know, it really speaks for itself. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> they got a couple. Everybody's got a little bit of a backstory, but they hit all the, what they really need to hit on it. Yeah. Oh, here's a question for you. So the gentleman that um, towards the end when they got into the secret society there, when they were at the party, mm -hmm. and the guy said, "I, you know, the first time I saw you, I thought you... When did he see him earlier in the movie? I must have missed that. Or The homeless camp. Yeah, uh -huh. that's where he was. Okay. Okay. He, he was the guy sitting on the couch bitching about the TV station and the, the hackers. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, that's it then. Okay, so moving on to our questions. What format did you watch it on, and how was the quality? For me, it was Amazon Prime, and it was high def, so it was pretty damn good. Uh, almost the same. Movie. You got DVD? Absolutely. Nice. I was going to watch the DVD, but I said screw it and downloaded a 1080p copy. Ooh. I, uh, I went voodoo and did the HDX. Nice. Very and nice. it was uh, it was very nice, and that's why I watched it twice. Fair enough. Douche of the movie, I would have to say. Uh, Alien Fox Race. Holly Thompson. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Backstabbing yeah. bitch with the sexiest eyes. Yeah. God damn, she does, dude. Yeah, that's wrong. That's one like you know that woman's gonna stab you in the back, like you just know, but you're gonna kind of risk it because you know it's gonna be some fun. <laughs> You're willing to what risk is it. your favorite kill? I'm going to have to say the shotgun splatter in the bank, dude. That's what I was thinking, too. That's the one that really stood out for me. Yep. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I'd say that. Because that's when he just started loading. They had that crazy, awesome splatter on the back wall. Mm -hmm. And that's like, I feel the moment you were just like, oh, fuck, dude, it is. Uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he shot the cops before that. But you know what I mean? Like, this is where he was like going like. Crazy dude raiding a bank, but really like you know, he was just trying. To, he was just trying to escape the cops. Didn't realize he walked into a bank. And this is where this whole, the whole movie like really makes you start to think. You're like, dude, imagine if like any dudes that went in and shooting up a bank and they never actually asked for a buddy. Imagine if like that's what they thought they were seeing or any you know something along those lines. How like, do we know they're not? Well, if they had sunglasses on, you definitely got to question that shit. They could have the contacts, but uh, right, kill themselves before they say anything. I guess actually, my favorite, I guess I'm going to say kill sequence is when they're going into the stairwell and you just see 10 guys coming down the stairs and he's like, <laughs> hold, on, hold on. And you just see him just start fucking shooting all over the place. Like, 
it could never happen in real life, but it still looks fucking cool. I mean, not that it's a good kill, but it's also a good, just like a little surprise. But I like the whole, uh, gentlemen, do you have your cards? You're like, yeah, we got your cards right here. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cheesy, but I still love it. Dude, this that's why people, and I can see where people would digress saying it's not horror because there is a lot of action in it, dude, but it's an action horror. I, yeah. It's exactly. what it is. We reviewed the Wraith. I did not. I I wasn't with you for that, and I have never actually seen the Wraith. So it's, it's not bad. It's an interesting movie. That's the race car one, right? With uh, yeah. yeah, Charlie Sheen. Yeah. Oh, I have seen that. Never mind. I've seen parts of it, and I saw when uh, they were attacking the gang in the building there. I feel like I remember that. It's like so, a great. It's like a great value version of the Crow. Yeah, okay, that could totally make sense for that. Absolutely. But like five years earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Word. So we all said our favorite kill. That would take us to uh, our favorite scene, gentlemen. End scene with the uh, the, the girl riding the, with the alien. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What a great way to end it, too. Dude. Was just some, you were like, yo, here's some titties. Hannah, hey, just a what's funny... wrong, baby? <laughs> I'm going to have to go fight scene for me, dude. Oh. Like, I got to go with the I got to go with the bank scene. The bank scene? Yeah. I have two. Fight scene and then the ending of him and Frank going through cable uh that cable station, going through the whole thing. The whole like third act essentially yeah, pretty much the there. Whole third act with the fight scene. I would agree. I mean, it was Dude, Carpenter always makes a good movie, you know what I mean? So, Okay, well, so... Well, maybe not Ghost of Mars. I don't know. We could, well, that's, I, I didn't like that. Awesome. That's a piece of shit. Did the opening scene hook you in? I think the uh, opening shots of the city and Piper walking through it is just fucking fantastic. Mm-hmm. And it really yeah. sets the, the tone and introduces you to the setting that you're about to explore for the rest of the movie. Yeah. I agree. So, yes, it certainly did. Honestly, and I feel like you could go... You can make a list to be like, okay, name the amount of movies you have where the solo character is walking in back to like some town or that he's either been to or he's going to with a backpack. Like, dude, there were so many things I thought about while I'm watching that Rambo? opening scene. What's that? Rambo. Rambo. That's I always thought I thought about the Incredible Hulk series <laughs> just because you know, like, hey, Sarah, what's up? Um, <laughs> hi. Say hi to everybody. Yeah. You are lie. She uh, came to create the kettle chips. The, the yeah. <laughs> Thank you, honey. I appreciate it. Hell yeah. Oh, uh, where the fuck was I? <laughs> Shout out to my girlfriend for cleaning the studio. Thank uh, you. Uh, 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 you're what? What? Beyonce. Beyonce. DJ. Beyonce. Oh, she caught him on that one. You can put it on the air. Give me a kiss. There we go. Oh, Beyonce. So sweet. Beyonce. Gotta get used to it. transitional it takes, period. It takes a while. It takes a while it's to get only used been to it. A month, guys, give me a break. You know what's gonna be great? They're gonna get married, and he's gonna finally be like, "Yeah, my fiance." She's gonna be like, "Wife." He's gonna be like, <laughs> he's gonna be like "Damn it, I got to do it again." And it yeah. happens. I keep telling Steph I'm gonna inter- start introducing the people as uh, as my ex girlfriend. Have you done it yet? I love it. <laughs> That's why you haven't on the couch. This yet. is my ex girlfriend. <laughs> I'm your wife. Uh, so, guys. Speaking of wives, best tits, hottest dick. Oh, sorry. Yeah, best tits, hottest dick. Oh, the, the girl at the end for the best tits. Yeah, girl. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to say Piper and Foster. Piper. Yeah. I got to go with Keith David. Mostly because yeah, I'm of say Keith David, man. He's a, handsome, he's a handsome man. He's got that smooth voice, dude. I'll go with Keith David, I'm, too. He makes well, my back pussy very much. So there you go. <laughs> I mean, Piper's got the beefcake going for him, for sure. I'm not going to say he doesn't. But Keith David oh, could probably talk a girl out of her panties easily with that. With that right, in front, right in front ass. of her husband, dude. Yeah, right in front of her husband. <laughs> like, uh, not even know. And the husband's guys, taking his off, too. <laughs> Piper has an accent. Whenever he he's not trying to be American, dude, he has an accent. Yes, so, so, see, but like Piper, all he has to do is just unbutton that next button down on the flannel, dude. Get that little bit of beefcake hanging out, bro. That's all. He doesn't even have to say anything. You know what I mean? That's like true. he does what Bobby does, dude. He just kind of shows a little bit of the meat. And then uh... <laughs> I see you figured me out. Mm. 
<laughs> don't say. Don't say. Maybe I should say what Bobby used to do. Sorry. Don't tell them. <laughs> Just yeah, we can't talk around. about the old pre-shows. So, uh, guys, <laughs> yeah. and the score set the mood absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really good one. It uh, it was kind of had it's almost like a western feel to it. Yes, it did in yes. some parts, it's, dude, especially yeah. the intro song when uh, oh yeah, was walking into town. It was the Lone Ranger. It was the it was the that was like Clint Eastwood shit right there. Yeah, dude, the Lone Wanderer or whatever like that. You know what I mean? Coming in town, fucking dealing with the problems. Western sounding. <laughs> Best song? Do we have a song? Was there a song? Oh, um, I feel like there was one, but I honestly can't think of it at the time being. So I apologize, Gorehounds. I, I remember songs being in like the different commercials, but those were just jingles. I mean, I guess you could say the choir song that was on the fucking tape. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know something? <laughs> we'll go with that one. That shit's in my car now every day. That song's that? called Coming to L.A. is the uh, yeah, is the opening song. All right. Alan Helworth, uh, if you search that on Apple Music, it comes up. The Sage of Justiceville. I think that's the name of the town. Just- Sage of Justiceville. Okay, guys. Right, well- so... Favorite character, Piper. Oh, yeah, Piper. Yeah. I, I, I just can't. Piper. That's yeah, it. I'm yeah. Gonna, He's so relatable in a lot. Like of ways. I said, John Carpenter does really good at uh, strong male leads and strong female leads, and these no exception. I'm. Uh, I don't know if I can do this, but I'm going to actually say the duo of Piper and uh, David at the end. Like I feel they played really well off each other. Okay, here's uh, a, okay. What duo is better, uh, Keith David and Roddy Piper, or Baldwin and Woods from Vampires? Oh, shit. <sighs> dude, watching <laughs> Vampires the other day was so good too, man. I fucking love James Woods. God damn, you're gonna get me on a fucking Vampires rant right now. <laughs> um, God damn it! Oh my god, dude, dude <sighs> I forgot so much about that movie, dude, and like. It's one of it's his last great movie, Carpenter. It is. That See, it, it is. there's a, there's some, a special place for me with James Woods because I had this uncle that literally sounded exactly also, like James Woods, dude. So you, it was just if you get the uh, Scream Factory vampires, yes, there's an awesome modern day interview of James Woods where he goes off on Twitter, like goes off about how set, a cesspool Twitter is. Nice. And then goes on about how he's just a nor- northeast boy who's trying to be western and trying to be as badass as he can. And then I like how he uh, ad libbed the entire like uh, Euro trash homosexual thing in the. Oh, uh, I could see that. And that's completely made up on the spot. He said Carpenter would let me do three serious takes and then four just joking around. He goes all those insults to the master vampire. That's me. <laughs> like, well, that 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 work 500 years compadre it's like yeah <laughs> like i truly <laughs> forgot about the amount of gore in that fucking movie dude oh my god it's just that the hell scene alone. alone like wow, we said that at the yeah high five buddy jing um, <laughs> this uh this means vampires is gonna have to be on the list for next year and and then moved up at this point Okay, we'll I'll switch a pick. I think that, <laughs> see, I think that we've talked about it at least three times in the last six episodes. I'd it's agree. Fun. I think I think that warrants a, a review. Did and then to never do the sequel. Okay, guys. So, <laughs> oh, oh what? God, you don't with... want to see John Bon Jovi? No. Yeah, good. Wait, wait, wait. I thought the sequel. No, never mind. I'm thinking Dust of Dawn. I was to quote had my, fucking my year old dad, please don't rent that. <laughs> <laughs> myself. Myself. It's a piece of shit. I was yeah. going to say, I was going to say it was Robert Patrick, but he did Dust for Dawn too, right? Yes. Okay. All those movies are good from Dust Till Dawn movies. Yeah, they're pretty yeah, they were bad. I enjoyed I them. I like the bank one the best. That one's fun. <sighs> I don't know if I've seen that one, buddy. That's a good one. That's the, the guy the from uh, Terminator, isn't it? Isn't that? Yeah. One? That's the second one. Yeah. Okay. So, well, maybe the second one is the bank one. Anyway, Scar. Was okay. it scary? Was it scary? No. Uh, kind, of, over- kind of. Sense of- if you're a conspiracy theorist, it's absolutely frightening. Oh my god! Yes, dude. If you're even anything, a- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, is that for? Yeah. I'm assuming Call that Heather is in. Hey, is fuck you, Heather. <laughs> I'm assuming that is in reference to the chips. Kettle so. chips. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> I know somebody's like reading the comments. Just like, fuck well, you. <laughs> you know what the best part is? And I'm glad you made Ch- uh, Chad big screen when he was saying his uh, behind the scenes because that's when I ran upstairs because I was like, oh, kettle chips. I was like, I saw Brody. Oh, I had things. Sarah like come in and just start feeding me bags of kettle chips. And I was like, yes. Was like, See, I was going to text the wife, but I was just like, fuck it. I could run up and grab a bag real quick. Like, I'm good. <laughs> so that's why I was talking to you and you weren't answering. Pretty yeah. much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was fucking ninja in ass upstairs, dude. I was, I was like, can I get kettle my daughter's like, what are you doing? I was like, get chips. <laughs> so uh, we are kind of scary. We all can agree. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, dude. I would say just like I said, you you take it in for a couple minutes after it and uh, put yourself in the, well, what if situation? Yeah, it really does get you thinking. It is a big what if. And I'm telling you right now, it's probably more of it is. I'm, I, I already said about the reptile people, and we'll talk about that on an episode of Power Hour. Don't you worry. So, uh, that comes with the the review of Midnight Meat Train. So, fuck yes, <laughs> nice. <laughs> that was a good one. That's Does right, because Hillary was at the end of the tracks. Yes, yes. yes. And it's a Clive Barker movie, and me like Clive Barker. <laughs> Do you ever play his game Jericho? No, that's a that's a TV show too. Correct. Not related though. No. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Clive Barker. Clive Barker really had a video game. I care like, about baby. Was that? It's only one Jericho I care about. That's right. It's the <laughs> son of Deathstroke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a comics and kaiju's thing. <laughs> hey, 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 I've seen that clan leader before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. He's going to host the podcast now. Oh, Welcome sorry. to talk to Jericho. <laughs> I, I, I got to say Jericho is another amazing heel character. Yes, especially in his uh, older age. He's perfected like the super villain type. I was going to yeah. say, because when he first came out, he definitely was not that at all. Oh, he yes, was the he good was. guy. Yes, he was. Mm-hmm. When he first came out? When I'll show you WCW, there was a time where he would troll Goldberg. No, like, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Okay, so maybe not when he first came out, but when he first came to WWE. F? No. F at the time. Baby face. Remember uh right. J countdown and the interrupt. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. walls of Jericho and all that good <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. that was a good Dude, I used to love that. He was one of my favorites when he first came in because I was like, who you know, I never watched WCW. I, I remember, remember my it. first time seeing him on WWF and I'd pop big, especially for that fucking intro. That dude, I feel like, and I could be wrong, but did he not fight Big Show in one of his first matches? Yeah, he did. Didn't he? I, I, had to, I, I had to. I, I had swear to, to God, he did, dude. That does sound right. It does sound right. That's why I'm mean. not a wrestling <laughs> official. Not about any means. I want to say the end of '98, maybe beginning of '99. That's. I want to say that his talks with the WCW. Okay, this is jerk the curtain. Nope. Nope. <laughs> right. Tune in. Corey Wednesday just comes night. in, dude. Tune in Wednesday night for a very special episode of Jerk the Curtain, a tribute to the late Tracy Smothers. Okay. Ooh. Yes. So moving on. <laughs> Does it hold up today? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's extremely more. It's just as relevant now as it was then. Oh, to say it's maybe right. even more. Yeah, it, I agree with that. It certainly is. Acting, yep. fantastic, Normal. all the way around. Yes. Even Piper. And again, whenever we go, whenever if you ask the question, could you think of anybody else? No, I think that the intense scenes were pulled off by Piper because, again, his promo work is premium, and that definitely translated to his acting. So, yes. Cinematography. The question comes up again. This uh, <laughs> with the late Mr. Gibb. Fantastic, fantastic work. And yeah, I'd also have to say that uh, he also did Ghost of Mars. <laughs> did he really? <laughs> That's hilarious. I didn't want to no, tell man. you that yet. <laughs> like, dude, all the raid scenes and everything like that, they were beautifully lit, dude, with some crazy just red light to yeah, just shadow out there. essentially all there the cops. Wonderful for this. Was this, was this his alternative to Cundy? Maybe. Dude, it, it felt very well, it I, felt I, very close to – um. What was the train one you had us watch for uh, New Year's train. Eve? Terror Train. It felt like the lighting in that, dude. Like, it was just very intense, singular lights. But, like, it just looked great, dude. Like, Well, I think the last movie he did with Cundy was The Thing. And everything after that, I think he had different people. Was it The Thing or was it Halloween 2? I thought you guys, I thought you had said it earlier. It would be Halloween 2. No, I, I, I don't know if Carpenter used Cundy while he was filming his scenes, though. Gotcha. 
Hmm, that's a good question. That's a Cundy question coming right. soon. Right. Cundy. That better be coming soon. <laughs> Look at Chad. Oh, I'm not going to fucking tell you until last minute. I'm going to pop one of these days. You get him up. on there, I'll be coming soon. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh I've already been there. Uh, right. Twice. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you, Chad, Chad's wife's going to hear a scream one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Chad just goes, Cundy! Cundy! <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it's happened okay guys so let's move on finish up this bad boy premise premise i love it it is absolutely great like i said it kind of touch takes the uh idea in the halloween three and then takes it up to a planetary level it's fantastic i love the whole sci-fi part of it i love the horror part of it i love everything about this film and that will be translated to my score later on so yes, premise is spot on, baby. Brilliant. Love it. It's the fact that it is real, and guess what? Nobody can avoid it. So yes, the premise is wonderful for this. Yeah, wonderful and terrifying, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like because once again, it makes you think. You kind of sit back, and it's even kind of like how they always keep telling Roddy the whole time. They're just why, like, why do they do you- not have it? They live Snapchat filter. They probably have before. That'd be, cool That'd as be perfect around around election time. Mm-hmm. And it only picks certain faces. Like it doesn't do your main face. Like it just oh, does, like, augmented reality. They live. Oh, make it ooh, happen. ooh, oh, that's wow. happen. You know, I was thinking watching this. I'm like, man, this would make a really good video game too. Mm-hmm. Actually, yes, it really would. I'm. I would love to see that happen. Right. Especially because, like, you would have, to, dude. It, in tight areas, just like, okay, let's say the scene where they're going down the alleyway, Roddy was shooting only the aliens where he wasn't shooting the humans, so you would have to do that, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And if you had them in tight bunches, you'd really have to... Dude, that would actually be pretty sweet. That would be. you really have to watch your shit, though. Right? Uh, nice. What does he <laughs> say to the one cop, dude, after he tells him to drop it? He says something about his boots. What does he say? Beat your feet. Beat your Man. feet. What a fucking saying, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> Where did that come from? Like, is that an 80s saying? Or is that I, just... Did they just, like, let him ad-lib that? And they're like... Nah, he I might have, because that... Beat your feet does not sound like any saying I've ever heard. No. And I just... I remember laughing at that one, too. I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> That's like I'm that weird Stephen King like language tattletale. shit. You know what I mean? Like, What was oh, that, no. bud? Don't like tattletales. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No. So, yeah, dude, premise was great. Sci-fi, mm-hmm. all that good shit. It would have been cool if we got to go to the planet, but you don't you didn't need it. No. And uh sad ending. Very sad. So, Steven, Steven. Steven. What's up, Scoobs? Yeah, the ending's super sad. It is. I mean, yeah, they took down that signal, but it wasn't like that would have been their only signal, you know what I mean? Like that was just meant for the area. It was still uh That's what I was thinking. It's probably just for like was that Los Angeles? Yeah. Like he said, th- this yeah. is on a planetary level. There's no point right. fighting it. And that everybody kept telling him that. He was still just like, No, fuck you, doing this. And even what's her name for fucking Hellraiser dude with her most gorgeous blue eyes. Okay, fucking. but so it could have been just disrupting the signal in the area, but that might have been just enough to wake up enough people to start the revolution. I would hope on a large scale. It would have been cool if we got a sequel of that, but it would have been nowhere near as amazing as the first. You know what I mean? But she's not the girl from Hellraiser. No, is she not? I thought it was. No, she, Meg Foster wasn't in Hellraiser. Yeah, I, I, know who was, she, I was keeping quiet because I'm like, that ain't her. I was sitting well, here thinking, correct me, damn it! I was double checking. No, I mean Bobby. If he knew, I, I was just like. No, he's Dude, wrong. He didn't, he, wanna, like he didn't want to speak up unless he was wrong, but I'm like, not yet. I, I, just oh, I knew checked. he was wrong. But okay, I apologize because lie. I've only seen the Hellraiser the one time we reviewed. Yeah, it. that's not Julia. Oh. That's uh, Dude, they that. look very similar, though. They just have those like killer blue eyes. What is she? What else has she been in then? Uh, she was in Leviathan. She was the bitch that Peter, that Robocop sucker punched at the end. Oh, yes. Yes, she is. Oh, the boss. <laughs> yes. The boss oh, the yes, 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 yes. Okay. She was a brunette in that one, though. Yes. yes. She wasn't a redhead. Claire Higgins. I think that's what it is throwing me off as the redhead, dude. Like, maybe it was the redhead with that the could crazy be. blue eyes. 
She was also Evil Lynn in the Masters of the Universe movie. Yo, aren't we still? Aren't we getting a new one? We're sometime. I, she was Mrs. Gilmore in Ready Player One. Oh shit! Okay, never seen it yet. Good. It was actually a really good movie. It was. I heard it was. I film. heard great things. I just. You know what else is a good film? We should probably tell our listeners that this one is. So, recycle, rewind, remake. I'm gonna rewind for days. Oh god, Definitely. yes. Oh, yeah, Bobby, you said you like the premise, right? Oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. And I would rewind this for days. Dude, not even rewind. I literally restarted it right after it got finished. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Boys. Fucking great. Drop those scores. I'm giving it a four and a half. That's what I'm giving it. Four and a half. Four, four point seven. You motherfucker. I don't care. <laughs> okay, uh, Bobby. I said four and a half is okay. all also. Gore, more score of four and a half. There you go. That works. That is pretty good. That's pretty good. So, what do we got next week? Next week is the other film that people argue is the greatest vampire movie ever made. Near Dark. The 80s. I like- Near Dark. Hey, uh, yes. Mick wants to be on that episode. He no. wants to, he wants to, no like, deal. No deal. Uh, he wants to uh, <laughs> contribute. He said he thinks that that's the best vampire film. I personally agree. I haven't seen it, so I I, don't, I can't agree or disagree. It's been a while I'll, since I've watched. So I'll have yeah. him re, uh, record a little thing, and we'll intro the show that way. I know Brody is definitely a huge fan. Yes, I've never seen fan. it. No, I mean we're all fan of Bill Paxton, so you. Yes, and I Lance feel like you, I feel yeah. like you should be. Pleasantly surprised, or pleasantly happy, I should say. Well, I don't think I don't think I'll be disappointed in the least. No. no. Nice. So, anything else new in uh, horror news, gentlemen? Not for I saw me. Gutter Garbs dropped uh, some new Black Christmas shit today. I might to go check out Silent Night, Deadly Night. Uh, they're getting new stuff. Uh, so uh, I saw. I think it was gut. Was, it wasn't Gutter Garbs. It was somebody else. Uh, was it Gutter Garbs? It might have been. The one support. I got for Black Christmas, I just got today. I checked it out. And uh, who? Oh, my God, dude. I, I'm going to forget. And I sent it to the group earlier. But there was a somebody out there dropped the Halloween 3 shirt. And I, we all know as people in the horror community, you either love or hate. It, there's, there's a lot of love or hate for Halloween 3. All the time. And uh, Okay, true, hor- that, true horror fans love it. The fake horror fans hate it because it doesn't have Michael Myers. Correct. Um. That being said, this shirt says Halloween 3 sucks. However, it has this amazing little fine print on the top and bottom. It says, if you're one of those people that think Halloween 3 sucks, then that's because Tom Atkins fucked your mother. <laughs> love it. Oh, I love it. that shirt. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I want it so bad, dude. Ah, <laughs> oh, good old Tom Atkins. Goddamn Never right. Pittsburgh zone, Tom Atkins. So uh, just to let you gorehounds know, we have been working on our list going into year three. Yeah, I got to still submit the rest of mine. Maybe yeah, I still got to I still got to go over it and over it and over it, because with the new criteria I introduced yesterday that yes. everybody seems to be on board with, I kind of have to. I mean, I, th- I think it'll it'll gel with what I already have picked where I just want to throw. OK, just to let everybody know, um, the only criteria we're meeting this year that, that has uh I decided we want to do films from each decade. So we're doing 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s. I decided that I was going to pick a Romero movie from each decade and just, we're just going to review it. Love it. And uh, that's awesome. The other, that the other thing that. is, the other thing is, <laughs> the other thing that we said was uh, a werewolf movie, a zombie movie, and a horror comedy. Correct. But All it doesn't right. have to be like a straight up comedy. It could be just like a dark so comedy. We can like do- the bird. Like he he can do crazies. He, he John picked crazies. We can do yep. season of the witch. We can do dawn of the dead. We can do day of the dead. We can do land of the dead. Uh, oh, I love land of the dead. I do like land of the dead. A lot of people saw, shit on it, but that was really good. I do like that movie. And by the way, TJ, did you notice it wasn't filmed in Pittsburgh, but it does take place in Pittsburgh? Uh, land of the dead. Yeah. Uh, what's it? Something green. Yeah, yes. they, they filmed in Vancouver. They call it. Uh, Fiddler. What was it? Fiddler's Green. Yeah, Fiddler's Green. So did but the map? The, the maps Ro- they show is definitely Pittsburgh. What was the Romero one that was uh, found footage? Survival. Yeah. 
Survival yeah. of that that even wasn't too bad. I enjoyed that. So I totally yeah. want to do my seventies film Dawn, eighties day, uh nineties. We could do the dark uh no, two evil eyes. Ooh. Okay. Which I believe is the Ar- Argento Romero uh mm-hmm. film. And then okay. for my two thousands movie, I can go Survival of the Dead. Or you got two thousand. You got two thousand yeah, and two thousand ten. Okay. <clears throat> no, he didn't direct that one. He only did survive. Survi- Wait, did he do land? Of- did he no, he land? did land. Yeah, he did land of the dead. Oh, I'm on producer, not director. Duh. Yeah, I'll do land of the dead. That's that's two thousand five. Yeah, let's do land of the dead. What's sweet. survival? Survival is a continuation of that storyline, and that is, I believe, also found footage. No, what year was that though? I want to say oh. Was I, that's what I, th- I thought. It was 08, 09. Oh, yeah, okay. so to be in that. He also executive producer on the Crazies remake. Ooh. The Crazies also remake not was bad. Good. Not bad. I, I like that, except for the ending. I don't care for the nuke explosion thing, but eh. spoilers. Sorry. <laughs> I'm doing all zombie movies for mine. So my four generational picks and my extra zombie movie. So actually, I get an extra zombie pick because yeah, one could. of the things with we can do survive. We can do all the Romero zombie movies that in my one foul swoop. Don't do night. Say, we're we're going to do that for our live stream. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm starting with Don because night's going to be for our live stream. Not that it would kind of, I mean, it would kind of fit with the aesthetic, but it it's not Romero, but it would, I mean, I already gave Chad my picks, but if anybody wants to do uh, even the remake of Dawn of the Dead or, uh, Crazies. Night of Liv- Night of Living, no, remake of Night of Living Dead, the fucking the one. Night- and also, if since we're already yes. doing the crazies, we got to do the remake of the crazies and uh, the remake of Dawn of the Dead. I'll do I'll do remake of Dawn of the Dead then. Okay. I mean, that would be what two thousand. That could be your two thousand pick. Let's just call next year the year of the zombie and just do all zombie films at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna do ghost movies, but we'll see. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, I got some creature features yeah, in there. How about we'll just do that? I'll pick better. all zombie movies. Chad, pick all ghost movies, and we'll just keep going with that yeah i did a little mix again i did a little yeah, mix I, I gotta go through i, I had a couple yeah. of mixed ones let's just do our picks and uh, i'll just happen to make mine themed again i i did throw one on there that tj requested that i throw on there which i was going to kind of do anyway so but we've talked about it many times on the show do you know what i'm talking about hold on let me look think about 90s bacon oh try uh, yes. oh yeah I started oh, watching the new ones. Yeah? The new one? What'd you think? Pretty good so far. Very Jurassic Park Predator vibes, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's it's exactly so what John Peter is fresh breath compared oh, to Jamie man. Kennedy. Oh, God, John. I just noticed one of your picks. What? Oh, it's such a bizarre movie. What? The Void. I know. <laughs> oh, that is that's such a I weird put it movie. on there, dude. It's awesome. It's got cool it's gore. so weird. <laughs> I know. Dude, listen. You made me watch Hellraiser. I'm making you watch The Void. Fuck off. I already watched it, though. <laughs> so, so, Chad, how many picks do you need for me now? Three? Considering I, it's going to the Dead remake I put on there now? Have you ever watched this Iron City Ass Kickers TV show? No. Well, no. Listen, Chad, if you really want, I will take out The Void for a late No, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. I'll well, because I was almost going to put on Haunt because I know TJ and I love it so oh, much. Haunt is such a, Oh, yeah. So. Oh. I need to if, pick- unless Bobby wants that. If Bobby wants oh, that, he can. I forgot to say uh, at the beginning of the show, my wonderful fiance got me the Fly Box set. Ooh. I saw that. That was all Fly movies, right? Yes. Vincent Price saw the yeah. way to Goldblum. The Critters box set, $30 on Walmart.com right now. Three left. Oh, shit. Ooh. How many Critters movies in there? Four. I've only seen the first two. The fourth was the newest one on Hulu, right? No, 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 no. The Those fo- are short ones. Was, yeah. Uh, there was that, and there was another, there was a newer movie. The, the fourth one was uh, the one in space. Oh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Mick did Critters 2. That, that had the Critter, critter Ball, right? I love yes. that one. Yes. Mick helped with the, uh, with the effects for the, uh, the Critter Ball and how it works. Nice. Also found out, uh, we haven't talked about it on Rabbit Hole yet, but after conversations with Mick and after a very small mention on the last Rabbit Hole, 
Mick is responsible for the mechanical effects on 1986's house, but uncredited. Nice. Oh, shit. He's, okay. Wonder why he's uncredited. Just want to put that out there. <laughs> the same way Nick Benson wasn't credited for, for Night of the Demons. So, yes. I mean, House was a cool movie, dude. So. Yes, very much so. I would love to get that box set in there or something <laughs> because I know that the three and four House films, three, the horror show, and four, that kind of actually goes back to like the whole House aesthetic. Those films are extremely hard to find. Really? I've never actually seen three and four. So I have. That, that, that's the problem is because they're hard to find. It's similar to the later Prom Night films. Well, four four actually starts with the death of the guy from the first movie. Oh, it does. Okay, mm-hmm. the and curly haired guy. Yeah, or, or the nom guy. The curly haired guy. Okay. okay. Oh. And it, and it's his wife and daughter that move into the house, and it's stuff that happens to them. Oh, good. Uh, Sean Cunningham returns as producer for that one as well. Oh, super. Oh, we love that guy. Man. Oh, don't we? <laughs> we do, don't we? That so I awesome. think that that's it for this episode of the Gore and More podcast. This is your host with the motherfucking most, TJ Bowser, the Lady Arouser, signing off. This is your Dark Lord of Knowledge, Chad Crispin, saying I'll see you next time, bitches, and go vote tomorrow. Ooh. This is your big old fluffy Big Johnny D saying, see you later, Gorehounds. This is your one and only killing machine, Bobby Mimone, saying, yes, go vote tomorrow, and I'll kill you later. (laughs) 